Hi, my name is Vincent Steiner, and welcome to another installment of Chalkboard Time. This episode is the, the uh, capitalist uh, notion that if I work hard enough, I'll be able to get nice things. These are the type of people, well, you just call them socialists, who think that people are born into this world with some sort of God-given right to possessions. I'm no communist, I'll tell you that right now. I believe a man should own his own house and bar and cow. I like this private ownership, I want to be left alone. Let the government run its business, and let me run my own. They don't seem to take into account that for that hard work that goes into all the production, they're not just going to do it for free, That's, that just isn't how the world works. Judging by his logic, you won't have to work. But then, how else are things produced? But then they come across the argument where they say, okay, well, things are produced um, by people doing things uh, for free, that there will be no money, and we'll just produce everything for free, risking their life in dangerous jobs. They'll work their arse off building a house for the sake of other people. He doesn't want to work hard. He thinks it just falls out the sky and just lands at his feet. He's complaining about working hard, but he seems to forget the very fact that it requires hard work in order to produce such goods for him to have in the first place. So basically this comes from your boss telling you, hey, you work hard for me, I'll give you food and maybe something a little extra, you know, some more spending money. No, the capitalist does not tell the worker that if they work hard enough, they'll give them food. It's not down to the capitalist to decide what these workers get in terms of, you know, their food. That's down to the consumer themselves to freely choose what they want to buy. You know, it's not a case of, if you work for me, uh, I, I'll give you food. I'll give you the food. That's, that's not how a free market works. The free market is down to the consumer themselves. And this just shows that, you know, these people don't even understand supply and demand. Capitalism is not pro-business, it's pro-consumer, because it's the consumer that dictates and decides and freely chooses what they want. In other words, if I go into a shop, I'm the one, as the consumer, who would choose what I want to buy. It's not down to a, a business owner. It's not, it's not like a, a consumer walks into a shop and the, the business owner says, buy that. That's not how it works, that's not how the world works, It's not how the market works. The consumer goes into a shop and buys what they want. And if that business cannot provide for what they want, if the business does not have it in supply and their competition does, this consumer demand is putting pressure on the businesses to provide because if they do not, their competition will wipe the floor with them. Maybe you want a nice you know, new sports car, the latest Lamborghini. Sounds nice, right? So, you decide, hey, you know what, I'm going to work, I'm going to uh, go to my factory job, I'm going to, you know, go there, I got to think about my car, I want that car, I'm going to produce twice as more, I put more output. Two years later, well, you still don't have that car. Upon review of why this is, you take a closer look at the system. So you decide, hey, I'm going to take a closer look at this. First you notice, your boss has that sports car you wanted, and he's way richer. This is all because you gave more and he was able to buy that sports car from the products you produced and he gave you that excess amount of money. Let's just say for example this was a sports car that just came out and you notice this trend yourself and this is all about trickle down. Basically a new product comes out and the product is really really expensive and perhaps only the you know rich people can afford it at first and over a certain period of time the cost of that um, produce begins to lower so that it's more affordable for your average person. The reason why this happens is because the more that you produce of that product, the more there is in supply, the more there is for people to buy. So the more that you produce of the goods and services, the more the cost of the product drives down in cost. So let's say, for example, this business owner or whatever is an, an owner of a car company and he gets his workers to produce cars in over, like, I don't know, a couple of decades and so many of these cars have been produced. The more those cars are produced, 
the lower the cost of those cars are going to be because the more there is in supply for people to basically buy. What he doesn't understand is the very fact that although at first the rich person is able to afford it, at a later point in time this product is becoming more affordable because of the hard work that they've put in. Because of the hard work they've put in in terms of producing more, it pays off years later because the cost of the car is driving down due to more of those cars being out on the road. Now imagine this happening over and over again in a nearly endless cycle. You are trapped in this. There's nothing you can do about it. The system is rigged this way so that you always provide for the rich elite. This way, well, you're just a slave. And actually there's a term for this. It's called wage slavery. A system where you're always doomed to just provide for a man above you and get little out of return. Well, we've already been through that. Um, this whole thing about wage slavery. This is the very reason why your paper money is devaluing. Because the more that they print of that paper currency in circulation, the lower the value of the currency is going to be. Because there's more paper in circulation, the more the inflation of that currency is, the lower the valuation of the currency. Because the more you have of the paper in circulation, the less value that currency holds. Now take that same analogy and stick that inside produce. The more that these workers produce of these goods and services, the more cars that this company produces, the lower the cost of those, you know, Lamborghinis are going to cost. This is the very reason why when you look at a city such as Detroit, where it ended up in bankruptcy, it ended up in a severe economic mess, why do you think their house costs are so low? Their house costs are so low because who wants to live there? There's not many people right now who want to go and live there. They don't feel secure. Thus, there's, a, there's less of a demand for going to live there. But there's a high supply of those houses available. Therefore, the cost is lower. Thanks for watching. Uh, I plan to uh, make more of these, so subscribe if you want to see more. So anyway, people. I hope you've enjoyed my video, I hope it's been educational for yourself. If you've got any questions feel free to ask and comment below. But really all you have to understand is the more regulated your economy is, the less that your country is going to produce because your businesses are over regulated. In other words, by over regulating businesses, you have less business freedom to produce more. Why? Because you have something called quantity controls. That means the government is limiting how much your businesses can produce and because of that, your costs are sky high. Why? Because when you lay on quantity controls, you're limiting businesses from how much they can produce. That shoots the cost up because at the end of the day, the less that you produce, the higher the cost is going to be for your consumers. What benefit did that have to consumers? Nothing. The less regulation in the economy that you have, the more freedom businesses have to produce as much as they like, and whatever they like. And that business freedom that gives them the freedom to produce more of their goods and services drives the cost down. And what does that do? That makes things more affordable for the average person of society. Thank you for watching the video, hope you enjoyed it, and cheers for watching.